So we are recording now. Welcome to the Banner Bunch. Uh, who here is new to Banner Bunches? This is your virtual view, actually. This is kind of the time of year where we get a lot of new people. Uh, this is something that we do on a monthly basis. Uh, I'll send out an invite a couple weeks in advance so you know what the topic is. But we just have a, a quick little training about Banner, and then it's an open forum where we can answer a lot of questions. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. We've done a lot of these for the past year, and uh, if you do miss one, we record them. We put them on our YouTube site, and I'll send out information about that afterwards. So we have a pretty standard agenda. Uh, this is one of your opportunities to see our entire team on Applications and Systems Programming Team, or the Banner Bunch. So we'll introduce us. Uh, this month's topic, we're going to talk about how to find more information about Banner. Uh, because sometimes you don't know where to go for questions and answers. Uh, usually we try to aim for about 20 minutes or so, and then the rest of the hour is for any question you have. We can keep the conversation going about finding your information, or we can go off topic and answer any sort of questions you have. So this is a special month because we have a new member on our team. So I want to introduce Catherine Williams. Catherine Williams is joining the programmers, and she also is going to be a project manager for us for the next couple of years. Uh, she comes from OSU and has a ton of experience with Banner, so we're thrilled to have her. Uh, if you haven't met her yet, or if you haven't seen my email, I, I recommend you come shake her hand, get to know her, she's awesome. <laughs> now I have to live up to that. <laughs> Uh, the rest of our team, some of us are missing today. Uh, Kimmy's on our way in. Mark and Tyler are actually at a training at Southern Oregon University, so they're down there spreading our limbet and love. Uh, Teresa Patterson is at the end. Lori Peterson. Carl is telecommuting today. Lena, our administrative ninja, is hiding in the back. We'll point her out. Uh, I'm Gabriel Williams, and Michael Coiner is our CIO. Uh, before we dive into talking about where to find information about Banner, I want to share just a, a quick story. Um, so this is me in 1996, and I looked a lot younger than I do now. Uh, that was my first experience with Banner. Uh, I was a police dispatcher on the campus, and occasionally I had to get into Banner to go to Spaden and look up an address. I really didn't use it a ton, but honestly, the tiny bit that I was exposed to Banner I hated it. I absolutely despised Banner. Uh, and in hindsight, what it really came down to is I had no training. I had absolutely no training with Banner. Uh, I was sat down and said, that's a computer. You use it to go to Banner. If you need an address, good luck. I don't even know if I had like a sheet of paper with instructions. And so because of that, and because of the learning curve that's associated with Banner, the, the Acronyms that we use to go to forms, the, the weird layout and the hotkeys and that sort of thing. I did everything that I could to avoid Banner. I mean, it was just it was a miserable experience. It was the bane of my existence, um, and it wasn't really a good introduction to the system. Fast forward ten years, I got a job at Oregon State University. Two thousand four, I gained about forty pounds. Uh, <laughs> she cut my hair. Uh, but the first job that I had at Oregon State, and really the first job in my professional career, was uh, to be an expert on Banner on their campus. And not only that, but to be an expert in duplicate records, a very niche area of Banner. Here we call them dirts. Uh, and I had a completely different experience. Uh, for one, the training on Oregon State's campus is uh, a little bit better. I had classes that I could take. Uh, there were people on campus that I knew I could go to who were absolutely experts in their areas. Uh, and I became familiar with some of the, the services Illusion has, or back then it was SunGuard, to train up. Um, once I went in with a different attitude, it was my job to be an expert. I, I was there to learn Banner to know everything and anything about it. So going into that, I had a completely different experience. Uh, I still had the same learning curve. It was, it's brutal. Uh, but once I got on top of that, I realized the banner is an immensely powerful 
the episode five. No way. Yeah. Uh, it's an immensely powerful tool. It's a triple A world class tool for student information systems. It meets a ton of our needs, and it's so big that most people don't know a lot of functionality. Totally different experience for me. And I'm hoping that as we do these banner bunches, that you have the same sort of experiences. If anybody in here hates banner or it really gets in the way of their job, I want you to know that there is a learning curve and it can't suck. But you can get on top of it. We've got a lot of tools in our toolkit to help you with that. That's what we're here for. So let's dive into this. Finding information on Banner. We've got a lot of places, and when I send out the PowerPoints later on, I'll include all the links to these so you have, a, have the shortcuts. Uh, but several of these places we maintain, several of them are support that Lucene provides to us. Lucene is the company that makes Banner. So I'll walk through some of these. I'm actually going to dive out of this PowerPoint. We'll go look at them. <clears throat> so who knows how to get to our Banner homepage? Most people. Uh, if you don't, I'll provide the URL. It's not easy to remember. Most people just make it a shortcut. But on our homepage, well, there is actually quite a bit of information, more than just the start banner or go to big banner. Uh, there's a lot of information about us, and this is a work in progress. You know, we, we understand that it's uh, pretty text heavy and, and hard to sort through, but uh, there's quite a bit out here. All these links up here actually just anchor down below, so they just take you down the page, so you can scroll through it. There's a lot of information or you can click on these. Uh, most of the information that you'll normally use is right at the top though. Get into Banner and then what's going on in the near future. Uh, looks like we're a little out of date because Mark uh, puts our maintenance calendar reminders at the top here and this was last weekend and he's gonna train for a week. So that's probably gonna change to our November one here soon. Sometimes you can see where the Banner bunches are. We put our invites out here as well. Uh, a lot of good information there. The maintenance calendar is a heavily used area of this page. Uh, once, one weekend out of every month, we reserve the right to take down banner and uh, all of its systems to do updates or whatever needs to be done. Uh, not every weekend do we do that, not every uh, one of these maintenance weekends, but you can see when they're gonna happen. So the November one's coming up here on the 12th and 13th. And when I clicked on that, nothing came up. That's because we don't have anything planned for it. But if you look at last maintenance weekend, we updated all these systems. So some of them we use, some of them we don't. They, they're part of our upgrade cycle. So in December, we're going to be updating Banner quite a bit. Uh, but it's good to know when Banner's going to be down. And that way, it's not a surprise. Or if you come in on a weekend and Banner's not working, you can look here first and be like, ah, oh, it's maintenance weekend. We have a lot of recommended links out here that lead to some of our standards around person searching or help with in some tips. Uh, some of this is data documentation, so let us know if any of it's wrong. Um, we maintain it as much as we can, but this is pretty standard information about Banner. How was operation, whether or not we're up and running, and one new place that many of you may not know about, those of you that are involved in testing Banner, we have many different instances that are live production system. Uh, you can actually get to our other instances here at the very bottom, uh, pprod, test, e-test, and then uh, Just as a quick rundown on what these instances are, they're copies of our production server. So the data is live data. You have to be careful with it. Uh, but it is full data. So pprod, we clone production data onto it every Friday night. So it's a copy of the system from Friday. Test and dtest and devl, we tend to update quarterly. So right now, the data and those are from the beginning of October and January, we'll, we'll refresh them. Uh, if you're involved in testing, this is where you're gonna go. If you don't, uh, it's just nice to know that it's out there. One other area that I'd like to point out on this page is the people. One of your biggest resources on this campus are the experts in all the different areas. And we actually have a section out here, new users and getting help. Who are the experts on our campus and in what areas? 
Uh, for example, Jane Tillman is one of our experts in CAP. She's sitting right here. So if you have a question about CAP, you can come to her. Uh, Elaine McDougall and Polly over in Business Office, Sandra in HR. Uh, these are really the people that know the system the best inside and out and are available to ask questions if you have them. Uh, we try to keep this up to date, but I just noticed that Debbie Zeller, who's moved to academic affairs, she's up there, although she's an expert in everything, honestly. Uh, it's good to have this information, because these are the people you can go to ask questions. The other people you can go to ask questions is us. We're the experts on Banner as well. Sometimes we're not functional experts. We don't really know. We might not know the entire process on how an application gets evaluated and admitted and all that, but we know who to talk to if we don't have that information available. So Gabe, before we leave yes. this area, can we go back to testing and let them know that SIS is also there in part of that testing, not just the banner IMB? Right, so Kimmy's point is that when you click on these, <clears throat> say we go to PPROD, you can go to banner IMB, the administrative forms in banner, or you can actually, we have a copy of web runner out there as well. So you can see a copy of web runner from a week ago or a quarter ago. I often forget that that's out there, so it makes it nice. If you have somebody that's calling in saying, I can't do something, I can't get logged in or whatever, you can try to mimic to see if you duplicate the same thing when you log in as well. All right. Who here knows about the band office? And has access. Uh, most of you, if not everybody, should have access to the docs. If you don't, let us know. Lori can get you access. Uh, where this is at is on the G drive. So let me back up. On the G drive, the shared data that's for everybody, uh, it's all permissions based. So you may not be able to see things out there, but in groups, you should see a folder called Bandocs. If you don't see that folder, let us know. You access to it. Inside Bandocs is a whole bunch of folders, but really the ones that you're going to focus on are these banner, and they're all split out into different areas. We download the Lucian information, all their user guides and helpful tips and handbooks uh, on a pretty regular basis, and we try to keep this up to date. I'll show you in a little bit how you can get. Uh, information directly from a Lucian, but this is a great shortcut if you're just looking for a student user guide. Um, and inside these, most of them have a user guide, which is usually a thousand pages long and a little difficult to read. Uh, but there's also handbooks, setup guides, there's a handbook for Title IV, uh, and there's also release guides. Those are related to our upgrades that we do on a regular basis. I'm going to go ahead and open one of these just so we can see it. I will fully admit that these documents are fairly dry. They're tough to read, but there is a great deal of information. Everything you can learn about Banner is in these documents. This is one of our first places we go for information. Inside here, they're usually, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Inside here, they're usually broken out by chapters, so you can skip directly to the areas that you're looking for. Uh, I find that using the find function in Adobe, control F, uh, is a great way to search through these because they're huge. Sometimes they're over a thousand pages long. Uh, they read like a VCR manual, <laughs> which I'll fully admit. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find the information in these, so it's worth asking us if you we know where to go or, or if we can give you tips and tricks on how to use it. But everything we know about banners is in these documents. Go ahead, Jane. How can we tell what our release, our current release is? This one is release 8.9. In banner, if you go to help and about banner, you can see what version we're on. Out in Bandocs, we try to keep the documentation current to what we have in production. Uh, and this is not. Shh, don't know. We're at 810. Because <laughs> we're at 810, are we? Mm -hmm. It's also a manual process for us to get up to date, so sometimes we fall out of date. But you as part of our process, we should be. At the top of the form in IMB banner, it also has a version number. 
Mm -hmm. And if there's a dash LBE on that, it means it's an LBCC modded version. But it'll give you, that's your most accurate information about where we are with something. Um, and in your self-service banner, at the bottom of your page, we'll have a version number as well. Let me show you that, just so you can see it. And hopefully Java doesn't need to update on this computer. Um, get a bad feeling later. We can show you that directly inside banner. And hopefully I just typed in the right password. Yay! <laughs> So right now we can see we're in general 864. You can see all the areas. If you go to help and about banner, we can see that student is a 8103, so our user guide is a little out of date. Uh, 813, 813. These are all our current releases. Another way you can see is if you were in, say, Spaden. You can see that Spaden is version 853. Not all their forms up to date the same way. Uh, the, one of the points Kimmy just had about our modified forms, if it's got an LB here at the end, there may be some uniqueness in that form that's specific to LB. That's part of our baseline project that we're trying to work through. Um, sometimes the documentation may be a little accurate because the documentation is only for the baseline instance. That's a great question. That's how you can tell what version we're on. So out here in the bandbox, there is a lot of information. Uh, if you need help navigating it, or if you're not sure where to look, let us know. Now where we go to get all our information is the Elysian Hub. And this is a place that I would highly recommend everybody get used to going to. Or at least make sure you have access. Oh, I do have caps locks on. One of the ways to get there is a lucian.com. Their support page has a link right here for the Lucian Hub. And if you click on that, it'll take you to Octa. Oh, I was signed in. Let me go back a step. You'll get presented with a page like this the first time you come here. Uh, if you do not have a user account, which some of you, this is your first time here, I bet you don't. I know Kim does. You can sign up for a Hub account right here. And it's going to ask you for some basic information, your email address. Uh, that's about it. When you hit submit here, it's actually going to contact us. And they're going to say, is this person really an employee? Should they have access? And I'll say yes. Because you can. And then you'll get some instructions on how to get in. Is that your number? That's my special picture to let me know that it's secure, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you log in for the first time, you're not going to have all these icons. I have a lot because I'm in here all the time and I have access to a lot of different things. Uh, but you can always request apps and be able, you'll have that one at the very beginning. You can request any of these and you'll get access to the ones you really should have. The two that you really want our e-communities and the support center. And I'll walk through both of those and what those we want. The rest of these you can try, but I'm not sure if you're going to get access to them. Probably not. Support center I'll cover really quick. Uh, this is really more of a technical area. This is something that we use really heavily to track defects. Uh, open up cases with Lucian. Uh, we have a 24 7 response from them right now. Escalated support. We pay for the premium support on this. So that if we do have an issue, they can get back to us right away with the answer. And the folks over in Philadelphia, where they're located at, are, are on this all the time. Cases are kind of like troubleshooting questions that you might have. I opened up a case for finance yesterday because they had lost the document and wasn't sure where it was at or how to get it. And uh, within a half hour, we got a response back from the Lucy rep that said, this is exactly the steps you need to go through to find that and correct the issue. It was great. 
yesterday. Yeah. Most of the time, you're not going to open up cases, though. Uh, they're, they're helpful to look through, but there's usually a functional, technical sort of expert in each area, like Frank Lister or Sandra or um, Bernie Jones. They tend to be the ones opening cases. We open cases all the time. That doesn't mean that we can't can open cases anytime you want. And searching out here kind of ends up being a trick as well. Well, I was going to get into that. When Gabe and I were working on this yesterday, we had an issue that came up. Um, Sometimes if you have an error message pop up, use part of that error message as you're searching out here. You want to see, is anybody else having this problem? Because chances are they are. Mm -hmm. um, go out there and search for part of your, your uh, error message and see if there's something wrong. Exactly. It's a great tip for searching. If you have a specific error message, put it in the search bar and see what comes up. Um, articles are more like Lucian uh, produced. Uh, sometimes they're salesy, sometimes they're really high level functional sort of information. Um, I don't use them a whole lot, but they, they can be helpful. The documentation libraries, that's where we get all of our band docs. So if we're out of date, you can always come out here and get the most up to date version. So like we had banner student was out of date, it was 8.9 in our band docs. If you wanted the 8.10 version, you can click on documentation libraries. I like to limit my search just down to what I'm looking for. So right now we're Banner student. And then you can see all the different user guides and whatnot. In fact, you can even limit your results down to just the user guides. They do not sort the way you would expect them to sort. So if you don't not see where you logically would expect to see it, search through and make sure that it's not somewhere else. So here's, the, here's the user guide for 8102. There's not always a user guide for a point version, so you know, 810, there's not an 8103, go 8102. That's the most recent one. I think, yeah, 810 is a couple of them. Yeah, here's 810, 89, 88. In fact, you can get documentation all the way through the banner 7 on back as far back as you really want to go. Change requests are kind of a misnomer. Uh, those are more like the defects that we find in banner. We use those to research whether or not the behavior we're seeing, the errors we're seeing, are something that OEC knows about. Um, ideas, I try to use more often uh, nowadays. These are really the changes we'd like to see in banner. Like, I have an idea that this form should sort a different way than it does by default. We would create an idea. And Lucene actually uses a promotion feature out here to help determine which ideas are really the best ones and which ones they should bring into new features of Banner. Uh, you can vote them up, vote them down, that sort of thing. The rest of this uh, really doesn't uh, apply to anyone other than the folks on this team. Uh, you can poke through it, but there's not a whole lot in there. Uh, Kimmy mentioned the search feature here. You can always search for anything up here at the top. It's not quite as powerful like it is Google, um, and maybe not as intuitive to use. But you can get information, and it's going to look across all of the Lucene Hub, not just the support center for results. And you can filter many, many different ways on the left. And it's not going to sort just by banner. So if Spaten happens to be something that Colleague also has, then you're going to see Colleague mm -hmm. stuff come up, which is another Lucene product. So Gabe showed you where you can filter things. If you really want banner, filter it by banner. So when you're doing your search, you're not thinking you've got an answer and then find out, oh, that was colleague or oh, that was some other product. That's a really good point. Well, Lucian supports many products. Banner's just one of them. It's probably the biggest one, but there's also colleague, which is a similar system, or Power Canvas, or many others. So that's most of what the support center has. I recommend you check it out, but I don't really expect a whole lot of things in it. Uh, it's something that more and more power users on or similar function techs in all areas. What I do feel that you guys could get a ton out of is e-communities. Uh, if you've been with Banner or, or been using Banner for many, many years, they used to have the Elysian Commons or the Sungard Commons, which really wasn't that great. Uh, this is not that. This is a very powerful forum community sort of tool. Uh, they try to build a little bit of social engineering into this and some gamification, but uh, not really that useful. Um, but what is useful is all the information that's out here. You can search for people 
uh, in other institutions and follow the threads. You can search for threads by places or basically functional areas. I'll show you those. So we can go out and look for banner finance information, and there's a this is all the threads related, all the discussions that are going on about banner finance right now. Uh, this is all content that's being presented and created by other users just like you across campuses around the world using banner. And colleague and degree works and anything else. The top one there, you guys have all kinds of power out here when you're asking questions. So this really does end up being a nice place to go if you just can't find what you're looking for, then ask it on your community. It's kind of tricky about addressing your audience because you have to choose who you're going to target with this, this question. But based on that first one that came up, you can put in whatever you want to try to get help with something. And you can respond to other people. Somebody may ask a question out here that you're an expert on, and you know the answer that they're looking for. It's like somebody right here asked, can focal labels be changed? It's a good question. I don't know. Jeff Dale from, if I hover over it, he's from, uh, usually it's got a, a campus from St. Louis Community College. John Dickey responded to him with a suggestion. Uh, sometimes these threads can go on and on because a lot of people have very similar problems. Um, the issues that we run into on a daily basis, more than likely, there's somebody else somewhere else in the world where it's the exact same issue at the exact same time. Uh, last fall, ACA, the, the, uh, the reporting that HR needs to do uh, for uh, Obamacare blew this up and they were using it very heavily. In fact, they didn't know about this until we did this training last year and we just typed in the first question they had and there was 50 other people asking the same question looking for answers and helping each other out. This is a vibrant community right now. It's growing constantly. I highly recommend using it. Uh, let me show you. If you did want to come out here and ask a question, there's an actions button up here in the top right. You can start a discussion or have a poll or, or anything else. The thing that most people use are discussions. And it's just like a word editor. You have a, a subject and then whatever you want to put out here. Uh, you can also go back and set up a daily digest so you, so you can have your areas, topics, emailed to you like once a week, once a day, or whatever. Uh, just like most forums are. I have a daily digest that tra tracks all different areas, so I keep track of what's going on across the banner, but you don't have to follow everything. You can follow just students. Um, let me remember how to set one of these up. You have to remember how to edit your stream. And you can put either people out here, so if there's somebody that you found is just an expert and always asking the information, you can follow them in your digest. Or you can follow a place like Banner Student. And just anything that everybody asks about Banner Student will pop up in the digest. I tend to follow a lot more people than areas. One other area out here, you do have a profile. You can update this as much as you want. Uh, you can go back and see your uh, actions and activity in the past. There is a gamification piece to this, a point level system. Uh, funny story, I hacked that at one point. It was a global leader with 30,000 points and then I got in trouble. <laughs> uh, the good part about getting in trouble about that is I'm now on the customer advisory board for So as you're using this, uh, if you find areas that drive you nuts as a user or things that you think can be improved, let me know because I've got a direct line in with this and we can get those changes made. So, so yesterday I asked a question about Safari eggs because we have a modification that I'm chasing after. And I asked this yesterday at 10 o'clock and I'm going to get an answer from Lori Miller at George Mason University at some sort of answer. I recommend just, yeah, at the very least, check it out. You know, it's kind of like Facebook. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. But if you don't use it, it's not useful for you, then don't worry about it. 
There's a few other things out on the Lucia website that I want to show you. Uh, there are webinars that are constantly going on if you go out to their events. These are free. You can register for them. Usually they're about an hour. Uh, you can even interact with them. They'll have a chat feature or you can call in if you ask questions. Um, more of these are salesy, but sometimes they just have a really good overview of functionality, like the communication manager that's coming up in Banner 9.0 that we recently had. Uh, a lot of these are recorded too, so if you know that there was a webinar and you missed it, you can go out and find the recording and listen to it again. Webinars are great places to find out about new functionality. Uh, another thing that's very important are conferences. Uh, Lucian has a global conference every year. Next year's in Orlando, Florida. Uh, conferences are expensive, but this one, if you're a banner user, is the number one grade A, very best conference you can ever go to. It's amazing. Uh, about 8,000 people show up at this. They're from all over the world. They're not technical people like us. Some of them are. But more of them are users that want to talk about, I solved this problem with Spade and I love how we use it now, or this is how we process applications in a super efficient way because we, we get 100,000 a year and I want to share that with the group. Uh, it's an amazing place to network. I highly recommend going to it. But I, I do acknowledge it is expensive. You know, going to Orlando, Florida is tough, uh, as much as I want to go. Uh, last year it was in Denver, so they kind of go East Coast, West Coast every other year. Um, if you're not able to make it to this, there are regional uh, Aleutian groups that have conferences as well. Uh, our Northwest has a Northwest Aleutian users group, which uh, we are going to host next year. So we're going to have that conference on this campus. It's a much smaller conference. Uh, it's about 200 attendees or so. Last year it was at Pacific University. Kimmy and I went to Mark and, and uh, Michael. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, I would also recommend that if you're an expert in the area of banner and you'd love to present, you can present at that one, no problem. Uh, registration fee is very low. Uh, they're, they're all over the Northwest and uh, they tend to stay close to the I-5 corridor, at least that's the goal. Lena has a comment. If you're presenting at Northwest Solution Users Group, we're actually giving, I think there's a discount that we're going to be offering for, especially for our staff that presents. So your department will get charged a lot less. <laughs> That's very exciting. If you're interested in that, really come talk to me. Uh, we need to get sessions. Uh, we're starting to plan that now. The Northwest Solution Users Group, whether or not we're hosting it, is our delivery conference as well. Uh, one thing that I like about it is the size is a little, it's like having a small classroom, you get to know the people around you a lot more. Uh, but it's also people in this local area, people from Chemeketa or U of O or Portland or Seattle, uh, Idaho, Montana. And the regional sort of areas have similar topics we're all sort of wrestling with, uh, especially like Oregon with Oregon laws being passed and that sort of thing. When is it next year? Uh, I believe August 7th, 8th, and 9th. Well, 7th and 8th, and maybe the 9th, we can't have of people. Of August. August. August, August 7th, and Monday and Tuesday. And if we can get enough people to present enough sessions, we'll go another half day on the next day. Mm -hmm. For sure, the 7th. And Michael's chair of that. Let's see, was there anything that I missed? Webinars, training. Oh, training, yes. That was the one thing I missed. Out here on the Elucian website, uh, they also have a training side of things, education services. Uh, <coughs> Elucian's always putting on trainings. They have a little one kind of like uh, Elucian Live. They have Elucian Learn that's in the fall, but it's usually like Virginia. Uh, it's hard to get to. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of functional attributes. I was more geared towards technical. Out here, though, you have access to many different courses related to Banner. Uh, let me scroll down a little. They do cost money, but some of them can be done virtually. You can do them at your desk. Some of them are done in person in the classroom. 
sometimes if we're not able to make these and we've got large group of people we can bring them see a rep in here to instruct us and give us the training. Uh, these are worth going through and checking out. Uh, because they're very specific to the functionality in the areas. Uh, your question, Jane? So how did you get to that? I went to elucian.com training. And then they have a course registration that's kind of their catalog. And one thing I would mention is if you're interested in one of these trainings, please come to me first. Because right now we're piloting a service that uh, we provides called the On Demand Subscription Library. We have 10 licenses to most of the training that we see provides that you can do virtually for free. So if there's some training out here, let me know. Uh, we'll have to coordinate with the people who do have access to it. Uh, we don't have a site license for it yet where everybody has access to it, but I can get you in. So let me know if there's something that you're interested in having training. We'll see if it's available. All right, so I went a little bit long. It's 9.40 right now. Uh, we've covered most or all of this. Uh, now we're at the point where you guys can ask questions. Um, is there any places that you guys use as resources or tools in your toolkit that you use to learn about Banner or questions about some of the functionality that I didn't share? It's always where it gets quiet because I'm always shy. Well, I'll ask about my Jane's question. Got a question. Yeah. Um, so we're going back to baseline on academic skin. Mm -hmm. And we had it running as a sports report where it was doing something. That's right. Modified. Uh, so there is a form, SHRASG, that you have to set up, but there's a whole string of parameters that you have to choose from. One thing I'm trying to determine, and I'm wondering if this might be a course, is what do all the parameters actually do? And I cannot find the answer to that question using communities or I mean even Google to right. see if anybody's got it out in the other colleges. So what is that? S H R A S T. A S T D. S. So what what you're asking is. Out here, let me find the control page down. There's a job, it's a baseline job with Lucian, and if you ran it, or you have access to run it, it has all these parameters of what do all of them do? Yes. That's a great question. Yes. It's hard to find out. Uh, sometimes we even have to dig this way for the back side. But it would be great if Lucian had this defined in an area where you can learn how to run this. So usually the first place I'd do is I'd ask somebody, if there's another person running the job, I'd ask them. Right. Uh, but it sounds like you're learning this from scratch. Exactly. Right. You're the you're becoming the expert on campus. We can go out to the student user guide. Would be the next place I and I think I already have that open. And I would just search for S H R A S T D, which is what I've done. And you've already done this. Yes. Uh -huh. You're in the right area. Sometimes it shows you process flow charts, which are are fun to read. This is part of that as well. Uh, academic history, end of term. This is kind of a flow narrative. This tells you kind of the process of where that's being used. It tells you to run the job, but it doesn't really show you what to run it with. Set up registration hours. It's giving you instructions on how to do that. Let's see if I can get this little figure. So it's annoyingly small. It does tell you a little bit about the parameters here, but sometimes you have to search through this stuff to look for examples. Um, it'd be great if they had it just like to find out more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More information about if you enter yes as this parameter, this thing happens. Um, there's not really, you're right, there's not really a good co consolidated list for this. And this is how you, this is more about how you set up the other part, which I, I was able to figure that out and get help on that. Right. It's, you know, I've got that, so that's functional. So that's, that's the first place I would start, and that sounds like you've already done this yeah. step. Mm -hmm. The next place, honestly, I would go is that you can use these in the hub. Uh, you can search the support center or anyone else that's talking about 
S H R A S T D. Can you use the word parameters in there? Sure. Parameters. And see whether or not you get to. And often you'll get ideas for adding up another <coughs> parameter or, or something like that out here. Uh, this looks like an issue that somebody else was having. We can filter it. Um, but honestly, we might not find exactly what we're looking for here. Sometimes this will bring up the documentation we just looked at. Mm -hmm. So the next place I would look at is the uh, Lucian Hub or the eCommunities. You can also try the documentation library. Yeah. There's a lot of places that I can research. Hopefully this is written the same thing. And in term processing, can you run one on ones? Do you have modifications to this? Um, and if I didn't find what I was looking for or something similar, I would probably just go back and ask the question. Uh, create a discussion. S H R A S T D parameters. What do all these mean? Yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit more information about what you're looking for there. But I would ask the question. Uh, and I wouldn't say that you guys need to go through all these steps before you ever come to us. These are just items from your tool chest. Ask us as well, because worst case scenario, we can open up that program and trace through it line by line and figure out exactly what each one of those parameters is doing. Because that's one thing I find frustrating with mm -hmm. Banner is that if you have something like that and it's a string of parameters, it just makes sense as a user, and they mm -hmm. don't write it with users in mind to say, here's what each of those parameters mm -hmm. do. One, one thing I didn't mention you know? is. <laughs> I mean, it's, when you're in here, it does give you a little bit of information, a bit. but it's yeah. not usually yeah. that helpful. Sometimes it yeah. gives you a clue that this is the term that you want to run this job for, so right. you can catch people in that term. Right. You know, if I put something in there, like there is it's it's optional. Uh, it'll tell you if it's optional or required, this one's required. It'll tell you if you put in multiple values or only one. This one's a singular. Update academic standing, yes or no? Oh, right, that's easy. No. But it's only like that. What a pre-registration future term. Yeah. Is that your one? Enter the future term registration to be compared to new ASTD match spreads out. What does that mean? Thinking. What does that mean, right? You know, I have a thought, I have a concept of what it means, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So that's why I think, you know, that's the kind of thing where it's like in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. so can you explain to me exactly what's going to happen when I stick a term? Another tool in our toolkit, uh, if we're at a loss, we can't figure out the code, and you're it's not being helpful, we do have those test instances too, where we can go in and, well, let's run it with a parameter and see what happens. Mm -hmm. We can do that as well. I don't like getting to that point where we guess and check, but it's available to us. Yeah. yeah. I go to the documentation library and ask for parameters for SHRASTV. Right. See if it comes up with anything for you. Let's try it out. Because the documentation library, there's a there's a different guide out there that's more it's not technical like IT technical, but it's functional. It's more technical than the user's guide. So Kimmy, you would go here and search for it on this search bar? I or? grab banner, but yeah. You would go to banner, banner student, student first. Banner student. Yeah. And search. Parameters for SHRASTD or definition of parameters for something like that that gets you that. Yeah, and it comes up with the and user guides and, and the user guides. But isn't there the one that's different than that? Sometimes there's handbooks. Those are really helpful if there's a handbook for your process. There's a student handbook, student reports handbook. Let's try that one. You can download these. I'm actually going to go look and see if there it's out here. Student Reports Handbook, right here. It's the same thing, maybe a different version. S H R A S T D. And so here, well, let's make this a little bigger. It has a report definition for this. 
and it talks through most of the process. Uh, ah. ah, there you go. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. Do I get a high five? You get Jimmy gets a big so high five. five gold stars. <laughs> Mwah. Okay. That's documentation. Sometimes you gotta poke around a little bit. So that's a learning experience. And after you get used to some of the documentation and the searching, you get really good at going directly to what you're looking for. You kind of pay attention to what you're seeing when you're poking around, even if it doesn't apply to what you're looking for now. It may very well be something that you can tuck away gently in the back of your mind for something in the future. Was that a helpful example for everyone? That was helpful for me. I mean, just this document. It was helpful for Jane. It was very helpful <laughs> for Jane. Any other questions? I know Kevin had his hand up earlier, but now he's staring at his cell phone. Oh, I was just going to say. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's just like the Yeah, it's just like I found something similar to this actually. I can't remember what it's for, but I found something similar to this for a process we went once a year. Mm -hmm. Crazy parameters. I didn't know that this is where you find it, but it looked like this. Um, it was really, really helpful. Uh, so that's something that's definitely there. But anyway, I think before I was just going to say how useful the hub is, it's a really a good first place to go. I've actually never posted anything on it, but I search it all the time. And kind of like Jimmy said, if I have an error message, I'll, I'll just copy and paste it into there. And chances are it's a direct match with something somebody has already done. And people with those, you know, come on and they'll say either you need to submit a help ticket over it or we've already resolved it here or here's how you can resolve it. So there's lots of different ways to find what you insert. Every once in a while you find something that's totally new to them and you just solve everybody else's headache. Right? Elaine usually does that one. <laughs> Elaine finds all those for financial aid. Well, we're down to the last 10 minutes. Maybe one more question, or maybe we can just end this. Uh, anything else? Go ahead and see what they want. Okay. Yeah, we're always open for suggestions for these. Uh, sometimes we're really looking for it. I think next month we're talking about doing person searching, which would be a good one, mostly because we may be making a change to how that works. <laughs> That's part of our baseline project. Uh, I can also mention, uh, give you a little bit of a status update on our baseline project. Is everyone aware of this project that we're on? It's, it is our number one priority. It's a huge project we want to take. Uh, we've got a very old banner instance. We implemented banner in 1991. We were the first community college in the nation with banner. Uh, OSU implemented about the same time. And back in banner 1.0, there was a lot of functionality that was missing. So we just made it ourselves. And over time, as Lucy has released that, that sort of functionality or similar things, uh, we haven't always been good about obsoleting the stuff we built ourselves and getting to what uh, Lucy has built and supported. So we have a good, sizable chunk of that. And it's going to start providing us in that uh, it's going to become a lot of rework if we go to the next version of Banner. It's becoming an unmaintainable, unsustainable system. So we've undertaken a project to basically find everything that we've ever built and changed in Banner and look at it. What's the value of it? Why did we do this? Is there a baseline way to do this now? Is there a better way to do this? Those sorts of things. The goal is by the end of next June, we have looked and evaluated everything and maybe even obsoleted most of it or transitioned to baseline function or, or found a way to set up a system differently or a better tool to meet our needs. Uh, it's a very big undertaking. Uh, but we're past the point of finding everything. We've built an inventory of everything in the system, and now we're starting to look at everything, road by row, which each of the areas every other week we meet with everybody and uh, building projects on, on all the things we've built. Uh, over time, we're gonna use some of these to train us up on some of the bigger changes that everybody's gonna see, like in person searching. Uh, or at the very least, we're going to try to manage the changes so that nobody's surprised that we're not pulling up a rug on functionality that may change. Uh, we're trying to be very cautious when we manage change. So if you see anything that used to be something or looks weird or you're not sure why the documentation works is different the way that the behavior is here, let us know because we probably know at this point. Any 
questions on that? Did we do our sign-in sheet? I'm we did. Sorry. We passed it around. Perfect. If you haven't signed the sign-in sheet, it's in the very back. Feel free to grab it. Uh, thank you for coming to this. Let us know if you have suggestions for future ones. Grab some coffee and, uh, and a Danish on the way out. And uh, thank you. Thank you.